Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys our pea garden. Last year we had both sides with peas, but it was so many peas that this year we're actually just gonna have one size as sugar snap peas. And then the other side, we're probably gonna have uh, like cucumbers and, and things like that on the other side. So right now I just need to amend the soil. And what I did was I left actually the stakes inside the soil here from the lower retention line and I just tied, well, not really tied up, I have like a nail over here. I don't know if you guys could see that, but it just hangs up my, my string, so my lower line, so I could get it out of the way and I, I just, I'm a lazy gardener, so I don't like to undo it all and redo it. I'd rather just tuck it out of the way until I need to put it down after I plant my seeds. So right now I'm just going to amend the soil and I know the bed is the soil line is a little bit lower than the bed but I'm just not going to fill that up this time. I really actually want to redo this bed altogether so I'm just not going to fill it up. Uh, ideally you would like you would want to but you just want to make the soils even as you can so when you have the automatic watering system it will water it evenly. So I just wanted to show this to you guys. This is the Milliliter Garden uh, Fertilizing Formulas. And then on the back I have just the, the garden detail planning sheet. So on here it basically says I need uh, one ounce of pre-plant fertilizer uh, for every linear foot I plant and also a half an ounce of weekly feed per linear running foot of garden bed. So I already have that all, all measured out. It's a 12 foot bed. So I have 12 ounces of pre-plant fertilizer and I have six ounces of the weekly feed. So I'm gonna lay that back down and then I'm gonna comb it on in. Next, we're going to sit there and draw our line. Uh, it's going to be in between. You can see here I have my lower line going here, and then my water line is going to be kind of in the middle here, but it needs to be like one inch away from the lower ground wire. That'll be like right here. So that's where I'm going to draw my line and plant my sugar snap peas two inches apart. So what I did so you guys could see it a little bit easier was I got this little piece of wood here. So this would be where my lower ground wire will be. And then I usually just stick like a, a little you know, yard stick up here so you can see the, every two inches. So since I have my water line starting here, I actually want to come off a little bit because if you start too soon these plants will die because the water isn't going to get here. So I have probably about an inch from here. So I'm, I'm going to start my first one right here. So I have my seeds and I already drew my lines. So what I did was I just basically ran my finger along the yardstick. And then after I got my line, I just came in here and just wiggled my yardstick all the way down. And then the sugar set peas that we are planting today are these. I actually bought all of these last year, so I'm hoping that even though they're they're meant for last year that they'll still germinate pretty well. So.
So you can see I went and just did my seeds every two inches just using the yardstick as kind of like a ruler and then I just basically just remember all the even numbers or if you're doing odd numbers whatever you start off is so I start over here with the even numbers so every even number I just went down so it's just quick and easy to remember what you're doing here and then that other stick here is just to guide you where the string is going to be that's going to be where the string is so it's about an inch away from the string maybe about an inch and a half away so I already did the whole entire row all the way down every two inches so now it is time just to cover it and I'll get the rake for that a nice easy maybe back and forth motion to cover our seeds that's the one great thing about the sawdust and sand it's just easy to to plant some stuff but of course you need your your fertilizer Okay, so there's all the string, the baler twine, and the lower ground wire already installed. It was just quick and easy. I just basically kept the loops that I've already had formed, and then I just unhooked them and then tied them up so they're out of my way. So I just made it really quick and easy. So right now, I just need to water, and one thing I like about keeping this baler twine from the beginning all nice and spaced out is I find that squirrels do not like to cross this baler twine. They don't like to come over here and get tangled up. I had a big squirrel problem last year of them coming and eating all my seeds, and then they basically left my seeds alone when I made sure I put all the baler twine back into place. So... It was just a nice way of making sure that they don't continue eating all my sugar snap peas. Seeds, I mean. Okay, so now it's time to water it in. So it's starting to rain so I'm gonna get this done fast so we have some garlic that we planted last year and I know that usually you plant garlic in the fall and you can harvest it in the spring so that we have already quite a few big bulbs I pulled out a couple there they turned out really well and we kind of just planted it in the middle of our grow bed I tried to do onions and I tried to do other things and they just kind of died because when the plants, the vertical plants get so high up, they don't get sun and then they just die. But it seems like since these you plant in the fall and there's no plants going down the two sides, they just, they did perfectly well, the garlic. So maybe next year I'll do garlic all down the center of this, just util utilize the center. And right now I'm thinking about planting on the outer side. I know I've said before that when you plant on the outside, when it grows it ends up dying because the the peas grow up so high here and it blocks the sun but I'm actually gonna try to do just radish red radish is supposed to be a, a short crop so by the time the peas get long I'll be harvesting the red radishes out of here anyways so we'll see how that turns out and you can see here I just basically put the stick back and I'm measuring out the two inches of where the peas would be. So at least I know if they sprouted or if I need to replant, at least I know exactly where every single pea was planted. So I do need to get some t baler twine for right here. Uh, I don't know what, what happened, but I need to get some more there. And then we'll plant the red radishes.